to, uh, I'm doing something totally different this morning. You know, what a year. <laughs> wow, right? You know, first we, we get hit with this COVID stuff and, and then, you know, the George Floyd death and all this riots and looting and it's still going on in places like Portland and many other places and uh, New York City and it's, a, it's just one thing after another. Things open up and then they close down and then they open up and then they close down. I'm spinning like a top. I don't know uh, what's what sometimes, right? Oh, my. But, you know, I think most of the messages that God has been giving me, oh, since this pandemic hit, and a lot of it has to do about the time and the seasons uh, that we're living in and, 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 and the coming of the Lord and the sign of the end of the age. And, and we've, we've looked at things, so we looked at some very serious, sobering subjects. And there's so many, uh, you know, things going on right now in a world that just breaks your heart. It just causes you to just wanna, sometimes it just, you know, to just weep. Well, I, I felt the Lord speak to me on Monday and I felt that we needed something completely contrasting to the heaviness. Sometimes I just feel the heaviness of everything that's going on. And I felt the Lord just pour into me. He said, I want you to share about a part of me that a lot of believers don't, I think, really grasp. And I know I need it. And if your rabbi needs it, that means you need it too, amen? And I'm going to talk about the laughter of God. I don't know how well I'll do. I'll try my best. You know, I really believe that God wants us. There's a lot of sadness out there, isn't there? Yes. And sometimes there's a lot of sadness not only out there but in here. Amen? Right? Yeah. We all have source. Everybody say source. Right? Pilar knows what that word means, and Kim knows what that word means, and Benita. Source, troubles, right? You know, uh, an old song. I mean, again, I'm an old hippie. I have a lot of, I remember a lot of songs. I remember singing, uh, hearing a song by the group name of Fortunes. You know, you got your troubles, and I got mine. You know, you got your source, I got mine, right? We all have burdens. We all have troubles. We all have things, adversity. We all have challenges. Uh, we all have things that break our heart, you know, and um, um, I know I do, I have mine, and, and, and Kathy has hers, and you know, I think we all need to realize that God wants to uh, give us beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. The oil of joy for mourning and a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Amen? Uh, Father, I, I just ask you to bless this message and that would you use it just to impart more joy and even laughter. Would you tickle us? I know, Lord God, that there are times that I almost sense so much of your love. There have been times I felt you were almost like tickling me. Lord, I know how much I like to tickle little children. It's one of my favorite activities. I like to tickle little children. I love that. I think sometimes you want to touch us in our funny bone and just tickle us. And you want to give us joy. Uh, Father, I pray that we would see that you see another side of you. Sometimes it seems like the dark side of the moon but there's a side of you that I believe you want to reveal to us. And so, uh, Lord, uh, reveal to us the laughter of God. Reveal to us the laughter of Yeshua. Uh, and uh, minister to us. And Father, there's so much grief in this world. There's so much sadness. Uh, there's so much sorrow. There's so many things that kind of just grieve the heart, you know. They give us a spirit of heaviness. So, Father, today would you just do something special, I pray, in the name of Yeshua. And everyone said? Amen. 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 
I believe that our Father in Heaven, our Heavenly Father, has a absolutely hilarious sense of humor. How many here believe that? I really do. I believe he has a hilarious sense of humor. You know, if you think about your happiest times, your most um, just enjoyable, uh, you know, memorable times, they were times when you just, you, you had joy, you had laughter, amen? I love to hear the sound of children laughing. I, I do. I believe that the Lord wants us to know more of his joy, even in the midst of a pandemic. Amen? amen. Can I hear an amen? amen. Think, uh, uh, you know, he is the author, our Father in heaven, our Lord Yeshua, is the author of laughter. He's the author of humor. Everything that is humorous, he's the one behind it. He created uh, the smile. He created the smile. He, he created the funny bone. Oh, I don't like it when I hurt my funny bone, amen? Not so funny, but he, think of all the strange and the funny looking creatures that he has made for his own pleasure and for ours. And here's some of them, and Kathy did an amazing job. We, only, we have some slides here. Think of the octopus. That is one funny looking creature, amen? amen. I mean, really, I, think, I find octopuses hilarious. I find them hilarious. That is a funny looking, where's his eyes? That is one funny looking creature. Uh, think about a jellyfish. That's, that's a strange and funny looking creature, isn't it? A jellyfish? Well, you don't want it to bite you, I mean, sting you. There's some jellyfish you don't want to be around, amen? But that's a funny looking creature. It almost looks like something from Mars, amen? You know, Mars attack, right? Uh, think about this, how about the hammerhead shark? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Come on, right? Who comes up, who can, that is hilarious. <laughs> It's really a, that is a funny looking creature. Thank you, Kathy, for those slides. Thank you. Think about dolphins and whales. I love, I love the ocean. Dolphins jumping up out of the water, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, seals jumping out of the water. Whales, that is, you know, just magnificent. They are, they are glorious. But, the, you know, it's just amazing. And, like, they have a good time, amen? They have a good time. How about, uh, when thinking about funny-looking creatures, how about starfish? I love starfish. They're kind of interesting, right? These little stars underneath the, the ocean and the sand. Uh, how about penguins and the way they walk, right? They look like they have a suit on, right? Ready to go to a, you know, high, you know, fashion dinner, right? Penguins and the way they waddle, they're hilarious, right? I mean, they are hilarious. How about, how about a walrus, right? That's a strange looking creature, you know, with the big teeth, right? Right? Hilarious. I mean, I remember when I lived in Santa Cruz where Kathy and I met, and right not too far from Santa Cruz, they, they had some odd creatures that weren't, they weren't walruses, they were like a close cousin. You know, to a walrus, they were called elephant seals. Elephant seals. And boy, do they smell. Oh, my gosh, do they smell. But boy, they were funny looking. Remember those, honey? They were elephant seals. Wow. All right, how about, those are some sea creatures. How about some land creatures? What about, what about the ostrich and her head in the sand, right? That is funny. The ostrich. They are, they are a funny looking bird, amen? Uh, and, uh, and, and, and giraffes. Oh man, I would hate to be a giraffe that got a stiff neck, amen? They, <laughs> wow, elephants and their trunks and uh, how about kangaroos? Kangaroos are wild, you know, hopping around like, but you know, you don't want to mess with them. I mean, they'll put you out, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
and their little babies are called joeys, right? And uh, koala bears, they'll put a smile on your face, right? They're not actually a bear, but koala bears? How about Tasmanian devils? <laughs> That's a funny looking creature, right? Tasmania, because you only find them in Tasmania. How about Komodo dragons, right? You feel like you're, like you're back at Jurassic Park, right? Komodo dragons. And then, and then what about, here's some funny creatures. What about an anteater? Have you ever gone to the zoo and seen an anteater with that big, long schnazoo, right? That is funny looking. When we were in Texas, they had armadillos everywhere. That is a funny looking creature, armadillos, armadillos. Chimpanzees, chimpanzees, orangutans, donkeys. You ever hear a donkey and it's hee-haw, right? <laughs> hee-haw. <laughs> and there are some funny looking dogs and funny looking people who walk them, amen? And there's some funny looking cats too, right? How about the plant world, the Venus flytrap, right? I mean, God has a sense of humor. I said all those things just to point out that God has a sense of humor. He wants to touch you this morning. He wants to touch you. He knows your sadness. He knows my sadness. He knows the places in your heart that are broken uh, and that are grieving, you know, uh, and, and he wants to touch you this morning and give you more joy. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Um, I hear and sense the laughter of the Lord in much of his creation. I really do. How about the laughing hyena, right? I mean, they actually laugh. They have a funny, sh funny laugh. Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12, then you will say on that day, and I believe that he's speaking of our present moment, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for although you were angry with me, your anger has been turned away and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. God is my Yeshua. That salvation is Yeshua in Hebrew. I will trust and I will not be afraid. The Lord... God is my strength and my song. He's also become my Yeshua, my salvation. Verse 3 is what I want to hit on. Therefore, with joy, will you draw water out of the wells of Yeshua, out of the wells of salvation. Therefore, with joy, will you draw water, living water, Mayim Chaim, out of the wells of Yeshua. When God fills you with joy, oftentimes laughter will follow. Amen? Amen, amen? Laughter will follow. I want to just, I want to look at for a few moments the funny bone of Yeshua. I bet you never heard a sermon like this before. The funny bone of Yeshua. Do you have your Bibles? Turn with me to Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Yes, the funny bone of Yeshua. Bet you didn't know he had one, right? And looking at verses 23 and 20... Let's see, did I get this right? 23? No, I got the wrong... What happened here? Maybe it's 24. Oh, my Lord. Okay, I got... Where is the one where he talks about... All right. He said to the... Let me just back it up. And, oh, I see it. Right here it is. Verse 26, note verse. Wait a second. Here you go. He's speaking to, verse 24, he's speaking to the Pharisees, the religious hypocrites and Pharisees. In verse 24, he says, You blind guides, you religious leaders, you strain at a gnat and you swallow a camel. Now, You've got, to, you've got to look at this, okay? Give me your full attention. Try to imagine and picture in your mind, okay, straining at a gnat, right? 
That's pretty funny. All right? Straining at an act. Now try in your mind, picture, imagine in your mind swallowing a camel. I'm not talking cigarettes, all right? Right? That is funny. That's Yeshua. He's using uh, the realm of absurdity to make a very strong point. He's saying, you guys, you got it all backwards. You got it upside down. You know, you're, you're majoring on the minors. You're minoring on the majors. You like, you strain at a gnat at the least of thing, infinitesimal thing of the law, of the Torah, and you swallow a camel. Pretty, pretty funny picture, amen? All right, and uh, <clears throat> I, wonder, I wonder if you could picture that in your mind. Look at Matthew chapter 19. We'll see another one. Matthew 19. I would love to see some artist actually show that of Yeshua straining at an ad, you know, or having the Pharisees strain at an ad, and then the Pharisees trying to, you know, swallow a camel, right? Even a very small camel. One hump. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 21. Yeshua says to this rich man, this rich ruler, uh, he had a lot, of, a lot of dough, and this guy was trying to justify himself. He was telling Yeshua, um, you know, how he tried to, you know, keep all the commandments and... Um, uh, what can I do to obtain eternal life, he says. And the young man says, I do all these things, verse 20. What am I still lacking? And Yeshua said, if you want to be complete, if you want to be complete, go and sell all your possessions and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And the young man heard this statement, and he went away grieving, for he owned a lot of property. And he couldn't do it. And Yeshua said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now try to picture that one in your mind, right? Try to picture in your mind a camel going through the eye of a needle, right? That's pretty funny. Now, some scholars have conjectured, and I think they might be, they might have hit on something, that the word for camel may originally have been the word camelos in the Greek for rope or cable, and not actually an actual literal camel. And if it was, those how picture in your mind trying to take a rope or a cable and put it through the eye of a needle. All right? Again, the funny bone of Yeshua making a point by using the realm of absurdity, the theater of the absurd, to speak true wisdom. Amen? And uh, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And verse 6. Yeshua, again, is speaking to some hypocrites. He says in verse 5, you hypocrites, you need to take the log out of your own eye before you can see clearly and take the speck out of your brother's eye. He said, don't give what's holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine or they will trample them and tear you to pieces. Again, you know, could you imagine taking something as precious and as valuable uh, as a pearl and, you know, come here, Mr. Pig. Let me see if I can put it on, put it on you, right? And giving it to a pig, right? Can you imagine? That's funny if you picture it in your mind, right? What would? Have you ever seen a pig with a pearl, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, heaven's sense of humor and... Uh, how about the wedding of Cana? The wedding of Cana. So Yeshua uses this a very all-important cultural setting of a wedding. Uh, 
for his first miracle where he reveals himself, you know, to Israel, to the larger uh, gathering of people. And he turns, he uses for his first miracle, he turns ordinary water into the finest of wine. I, I mean, he, the, the uh, master of the wedding there, the owners, said, you know what, you've saved the best for the last. You know, I mean, this, this had to be really good wine, amen? Really good wine. Now, I want you to just think about this for a moment. This could have been a disaster. This was a very happy occasion, and it was a wedding feast, and there were a lot of guests, and there were a lot of prominent people that were there, and they ran out of wine, and it was very embarrassing, you know, for the bride and the bridegroom and their families. It could have been very humiliating, and all of a sudden, this ordinary water is turned into this fabulous wine. And I, a, a, a disaster was averted, and I believe that there was, there was wine, and there was song, and there was dance, and there was hilarity. They were, I believe there was lots of laughter and hilarity. Amen? Amen? See, I believe that if you would have spent those three years, just like the Talmudim, just like the Twelve, and those who knew him, there were many, many, many occasions where I believe that Yeshua had, he had a great time. And there was not only tears, but there was also laughter. Can I hear an amen? amen. I believe that even at the, right before the Last Supper, or traditionally in the Christian world, it's called Monday, Thursday, and the Lord washed all of his disciples' feet, and when he got to Peter, when he got to Kepha, you know, Kepha, I believe, had a smelly foot syndrome. That, I really do believe that. And I think that's why he said, never, the Lord, shall you wash my feet. Because he was embarrassed to take his sandals off. He was embarrassed. He said, you don't want to go there. And I don't want you to go there. <laughs> Your rabbi has an interesting imagination, right? But I believe the Lord showed me that. And that's why he wasn't being proud. He wasn't being, you know, uh, arrogant. He was embarrassed. He, had, he was self-conscious about, I, I smell. And Yeshua, so then when Yeshua says, unless I wash you, you have no part of me, Peter then goes all full hog. He just says, well, then do all of me. Do my head and do my, you know, my whole body. And I believe at that point, Yeshua just lost it and broke. <laughs> I believe that he was L-O-L. -L. He was laughing and loving on Peter for his, just being honest, amen? You know, and um, I, I believe there was a lot of laughter as well as a lot of tears. And, li and li life is like that, isn't it? Life has a lot of um, sorrow, but we also need to learn how to uh, receive the Lord's joy, amen? Do you remember what the second fruit of the Spirit is? The fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit is love. What's the second one? Joy. What is it? Joy. What is it? Joy. The Lord wants you to have joy. And I'm telling you that we need joy in this pandemic, crazy, you know, obsessed, you know, uh, unhappy, miserable, you know, people who are bitter and just full of anger and you know, we need to have the Lord's joy. Amen? Do you hear what I'm saying? I believe joy is a weapon. Can I hear an amen? amen? I believe that joy is a spiritual weapon. I believe the Lord is saying to you and every one of us this morning, I want you to receive my joy. Do you, are you with me? Yes. I really do. And I believe we need laughter. We need that release. And... Um, I believe the Lord laughs with us like he laughed with <laughs> Kephah, with Peter that day, and he laughed with the people at the wedding in Cana. I believe that the Lord laughs with us. I believe that he wants us to hear the laughter of God. Amen? Let's uh, turn to the Hebrew Scriptures and we'll see the Lord's funny bone at work. Numbers chapter 22. And uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Numbers 22, or you can just write it down and try to remember it. Numbers chapter 22. 
Here's an incident that is absolutely hilarious. The hilarity of God. Numbers chapter 2, and there was a man who was a very prophetic figure in Scripture, and I think he could have actually been a true prophet, but he became a false prophet because he was too interested in the prophet. He didn't want to have a non-profit organization. Amen? And uh, his name was Balaam. His name was Balaam. Verses 15 through 17, there was a king named Balak, and he wanted him, he wanted him to come and curse Jacob, to come and curse Israel when the Jewish people, the 12 tribes, were passing through their territory on the way to the Promised Land. Uh, and we pick up the conversation in verse 15 of Numbers 22. Balak again sent leaders more numerous and more distinguished than he did before. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I beg you, hinder you from coming to me, for I will honor you richly, and I will do whatever you say to me. Please come and curse this people for me. Look at verse 22. Uh, he instructed Balaam, he instructed him to go, but only to say what he was going to tell him. And verse 22, God was angry. He was angry because he was going. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. You don't ever want to do, be his adversary, amen? Now he was riding on his donkey. You know what another name for donkey is, right? Don't say it, just think it, all right? All right, because we'll be safe, all right? I'm not politically correct, amen. So he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him, and when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn with his hand, the donkey turned away from, uh, off from the way and went into the field. But Balaam struck the donkey to turn back into the way. And the angel of the Lord stood uh, in a narrow path of the vineyards with a wall on one side and a wall on the other side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pressed herself to the wall and pressed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he struck her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn, to the right or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she laid down under Balaam, and Balaam was angry and struck the donkey with his stick. And the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and said to Balaam, What have I done to you <laughs> that you have struck me these three times? Wouldn't you have liked to have been there? Wouldn't you like to have been there? Oh, my God. I mean, we're not talking, uh, you know, uh, about... Uh, who's the, the, the one that talks to the animals, you know? <laughs> Dr. Doolittle. God opens up the mouth of the you-know-what and, 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 and talks through this donkey to the prophet, to the false prophet. That is pretty darn funny. Amen? And uh, I wish I could have seen it. Try to picture it out of your mind. I sense the Lord was telling this false prophet who the real donkey was. Yes. Come on! <laughs> who the real you-know-what was, right? The donkey had more wisdom than the prophet, amen? And turn with me to Judges chapter 6 if you have your Bibles. Judges chapter 6, we're going to just take a peek at a man named Gideon. A man named Gideon. Judges chapter 6. Now, uh, Gideon was just a young man, uh, and the Midianites were the enemies of, of Israel, and he was hiding. He was hiding in, um, I think it was a wine press, and he was beating out grain 
you know, in this wine press so that nobody would see him. The Midianites would not see him, right? And the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak that was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abias right, and his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press in order to save it, hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord comes to him, appears to him, and says, The Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. Here's this kid. He's in the wine press. He's hiding. He's beating out this grave. And the angel of the Lord comes and says, you know, to him, Be, you know, here you are, behold, he says to him, um, thou valiant, uh, the Lord is with you, thou valiant warrior. I can just see Gideon going, who, me? Who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? And the Lord sees differently than we see. He sees the future. He sees you, unlike the way that you see yourself and unlike the way a lot of other people see you. He does not see you that way. He sees Gideon as a valiant warrior, even though at the moment, you know, Gideon is kind of knocking at the knees and he's being, you know, kind of cowardly and kind of scared. He sees the big picture, amen? Wow, God has a great sense of humor. Behold, the Lord is with you, valiant warrior. And, and he became that. He became what the Lord said he was, amen? We're becoming what the Lord said we were. Amen? How many here have uh, ever wake up and uh, in your mind there's like a soundtrack and you hear like a song you've been singing, maybe a song you were hearing on, you know, on, on your radio or on your, uh, you know, what's that thing called that, you know, your player, you know, and, 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 and this happened to me this morning. And some things happened to me this week that just, I was just a little stressed by that. I was just kind of stressed by it. And, uh, and I woke up this morning, and actually the Lord said to me, you're stressed. And there was a song that Kathy played for me uh, a while back that I... I, I again, came on um, that I was listening to a few days ago. Um, and it's that song, You Say, by Laura Daigle. Laura Daigle. I'm waking up and I'm hearing, God wants to speak to us. You say I am loved when I don't feel you know, love. You say, I am strong, and I'm feeling weak, right? And it's amazing, beautiful. So I had to play it when I was coming down here this morning. God wants to speak to us, and he wants to change the soundtrack in your brain. He wants to change the soundtrack in your mind. Amen? Fill yourself with worship. Fill yourself with praise songs and with worship songs and with the promises of God and work with Him to change the soundtrack from fear and loathing, you know, and despair, you know, and, and, and you know, all the stuff of the world and put on the Lord's soundtrack and he'll, He will minister to you and you will hear His voice. I got up this morning, I felt the Lord say that to me, you're stressed. It's like he was saying, son, I know you've been stressed. And then I, you say, I am loved. You say, I am strong. When I feel, uh, you know, the world says, I don't belong, you say, I am yours. What a, I mean, I woke up this morning feeling the presence of the Lord. He wants to do that with us, amen? And... Uh, Hallelujah. I could hear, uh, here's another example. Well, this, this, this is such a great topic. Uh, Genesis chapter 18. In Genesis chapter 18, from the early days of Abraham and Sarah, 
And so you know the story. It's an old story. And uh, God promises a son to Abraham and to Sarah. Chapter 18 of Bereshit. Uh, and uh, looking at the first four verses, the Lord appeared to him, Abraham, by the oaks of the Mamre, while he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes, and behold, there were three men standing opposite with him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and he bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass by. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest under the tree. And so these were actually three angels. Verse 9, Then they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, In the tent. And he said, I will surely return to you at this time next year. Now the Lord is speaking, not just the angel, it's the Lord speaking. The angel of the Lord is one of those three. And don't you think those three may be represented Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen? The Echad of God. And he says to her, uh, <clears throat> verse 9, uh, where is Sarah? And he said, in the tent. And he said, I will surely return to you at this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah's 90 years old. Abraham is 99 years old at this time, right? They can't have any children at that point, right? And your wife will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door and was behind him. And now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years, and Sarah was past childbearing. And Sarah laughed to herself, yeah, right, yeah, after I have become old, uh, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Come on, God is having, he's having a laugh with Sarah and with Abraham. Why did Sarah laugh? <laughs> and saying, shall I indeed bear a child when I am old? I think heaven was laughing. I think the angels were laughing. And is anything too difficult for the Lord? And at the appointed time, I will return to you at this time next year. And Sarah, yep, she's going to have a kid. She's going to have a kid. She's going to have a son. And uh, Genesis chapter 21. The Lord took note of Sarah as he said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he promised. And Sarah conceived, 90 years old, and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the appointed time of which God had spoken. Aaron and Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Does anybody know what Isaac means? What the name Isaac means? Laughter! The laughter of God! Every time Sarah would hold that baby, every time Abraham would hold that baby, it was laughter! The laughter of God. And we all have Isaacs. And we have to lay like Abraham, our Isaacs on the altar, amen? Maybe there are children. Maybe they're it, grandchildren. Maybe they're a loved one. Maybe, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, um, we lay him on the altar. But I believe the day is going to come when he's going to resurrect that Isaac like he did for Abraham and for Sarah. Amen? Yeshua says in John, Yochanan chapter 15, Yochanan chapter 15. And verse 8. He's speaking to his Talmudim, and he's speaking to all of us. His present day Talmudim, his disciples. My Father is glorified by this, this way, that you bear much fruit, and you prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Stay in my love. Stay in my love. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be made full. These things I speak to you that my joy, heaven's joy, Yeshua's joy, the Father's joy may be in you and your joy may be made what? Full. That your joy, that your cup would overrun. Amen? My cup overfloweth. Amen? There are times when I just, I know that we just need to hear from God and I think God would say to us, your time is coming when your cup is going to overflow. Your cup is going to overflow. He's going to turn your mourning into dancing. David says, thou hast turned my mourning into dancing for me. I think I'm preaching to myself, but I'm also preaching to you. Amen? Amen. Thou hast turned my mourning into dancing. You know? Weeping may endure for a night. You might have a long, dark night of the soul, but what does he say? Joy cometh in the morning. Amen? There's going to be a new day. Amen? There's going to be a new day. Proverbs 17, I just want to read a few more scriptures about this, about the laughter of God, the joy of heaven. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a joyful heart is a good medicine. Amen? Uh, I'm prescribing, I'm writing out a script for you today, all right? Dr. Yeshua says that a merry heart, a joyful heart is what? It's good medicine and you need to take it amen and um, proverbs chapter 15 verse 15 all the days that afflicted of the afflicted are bad but a cheerful heart has a continual feast a joyful heart a continual heart has a continual feast psalm 1611 psalm 1611 You, O oh Lord, David says, has made me known the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Pleasures. God also wants us to know his pleasures. Amen? He wants us to know his pleasures. He wants us to know his joys. In your presence. There's fullness of joy. Get into God's presence. If you're in the car, take your mask off. You don't need to have your mask on in the car, okay? Start singing to the Lord. Start talking to the Lord. You're in the shower, start singing to the Lord, okay? You know, <clears throat> wherever you are, doing the pots and pans. You know, I talked last Shabbat about that practicing the presence of the Lord, amen? We all need to be practicing the presence of the Lord like Brother Lawrence. Because in his presence is what? The fullness of joy. And pleasures at his right hand forevermore. Proverbs, uh, Psalm, Psalm chapter 32. Psalm 32. And uh, verse 10 and 11. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, loving kindness shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones. Shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice, I remember a song when I was just a brand new believer. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. Again I say rejoice. It's, it is a medicine. It is a balm of Gilead for your soul. 
and we need it in these times that we're living in. After 70 years of captivity, Israel was released uh, and uh, to rebuild the city. Uh, God sent Nehemiah uh, to rebuild the temple and rebuild the city. And looking at Nehemiah chapter 8, and uh, 70 years, and, and the book, the book of the law, the Torah, was found, and it was dusted off, and they opened it up, and they read it. Nehemiah chapter 8, after these years, 70 years of being enslaved, Verse 9, Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra was the priest and scribe. And the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord. Don't mourn. Don't weep. For all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the Torah. And he said to them, Go and eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions to him who has nothing prepared. For this day is holy to the Lord. This was the Feast of Tabernacles. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. There was a restoration. They were restoring Jerusalem. They were restoring the temple. God wants to restore Joy. David said, Thou restoreth my soul. Amen? And he wants us to know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So in the, in the midst of all this mishigash, everybody just say mishigash. All the mishigash that's on the television every day. Every single day, people just, they just, every day, oh, so many more tested positive, and this is the number now. Dick, you know what? Turn that babbling idiot off, amen? amen? Turn it off and surround yourself with songs of deliverance, amen? amen? Songs of deliverance. I want every one of you, this, this Shabbat, I believe God wants to just touch you in places where, you know, he wants to release you from the heaviness of the world all around us. Are you receiving this message? Yes. He wants you to know his laughter. He wants you to know his joy. He doesn't just want you to be mourning all the time. Some of you have been mourning all your life. You've been grieving grieving all your life. And the main part of your soul, there's something that's in your soul that just has never been fully released from that grief. Whatever the losses are, the Lord wants to touch you and he wants to release you, amen? He wants you to be free, free from all the heaviness, free from all the sadness, amen? There's a reason why you're here today. There is a reason why you're here today. Yeshua loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak. Yes, Yeshua loves me. Yes, Yeshua loves me. Who? Yes, Yeshua loves me. The Bible tells me so. He loves us. He wants us to know his joy. A prophetic picture of Yeshua in the Psalm. Psalm 45. I don't know if you've ever saw this before. Psalm 45 is a prophetic picture of the Messiah. And David here says in verses um, 6 and 7, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and you hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you 
with the oil of joy above thy fellows. There is a super abundant measure of joy in Yeshua. There is a fullness of joy and laughter around the throne of God. And again, in Isaiah 61, he gives me beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, for grieving, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. There is an oil of joy for you. I, I brought this up, and I, I think we need to do this this morning. God has to do this. We'll come down, whoever wants me to anoint you with oil, um, if Kevin is around or Kathy will come, and let's just, let's just receive. I'll put a little oil, we'll pray, maybe Kevin could join me. And I just believe that God wants to give us the oil of joy. Oil, there's, the oil is something very sweet, fragrant, you know, very gentle about, about the anointing oil. Amen? And uh, he wants us to know the oil of joy uh, for a spirit of heaviness, for, for, for mourning. And his joy. I believe that heaven and the new Jerusalem will be ringing with laughter. Does anybody believe that? Yeah. It will be ringing with laughter. There'll be sounds of joy. We shall go out with joy. We we'll, shall be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into singing. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Amen? I see tears of joy wiping away the tears of sorrow and sadness. And um, Isaiah chapter 51 Oh, this is, I remember when I was a young believer, I remember these words were put to a song. Isaiah 51 and verse 11. So the ransom of the Lord will return and come with joyful shouting to Zion and everlasting joy will be on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing will, what? Will flee away. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. An everlasting joy will be upon their heads. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, an everlasting joy will be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning will flee away. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy will be upon their heads. I'll end with this scripture, 1 Peter chapter 1. This was one sermon, you know, that you could laugh with me. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him yet, but you believe in him. And greatly rejoice with a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Come, Lord Yeshua, and we build your mighty temple. Soon in our day.